the crew of the Polaris program will conduct their first ever commercial spacewalk wearing the new SpaceX spacesuits. So, what can we expect from these spacesuits, and are they superior to NASA's? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to make sure you never miss any updates from us. Now let's begin with today's content. SpaceX is developing new spacesuits designed for extravehicular activity, or EVA as it's known, and the Polaris program, funded by Shift4 Payments founder Jared Isaacman, will test out the new EVA suits during the first all-commercial spacewalk planned for later this year. Isaacman will lead the Polaris Dawn crew into a higher Earth orbit than any human has been to since 1966. That record is currently set by NASA's Gemini 11 astronauts who orbited the Earth at 1,373 kilometers. Okay, I'm out. Okay, I put a little roll in, took it right out. It is the highest altitude and the furthest humans have been to aside from NASA astronauts visiting the moon. This Dragon mission will take advantage of Falcon 9 and Dragon's maximum performance, flying higher than any Dragon mission to date and endeavoring to reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown, the program announcement says. They plan to conduct a spacewalk, and the data they collect during the EVA will help SpaceX improve the spacesuit development for future long-duration missions to the Moon and Mars aboard Starship. Which begs the question, how is this new spacesuit different from SpaceX's current suits? The current operational spacesuits are for intravehicular activity, or IVA, primarily designed to maintain astronauts in a pressurized environment inside the Crew Dragon in case of an emergency such as cabin depressurization. The slip-on one-piece spacesuit features a communications system to communicate with mission control and other astronauts in the spacecraft, as well as hearing protection that protects astronauts' ears during the rocket launch ascent and spacecraft re-entry. It also has two internal layers, a flame-resistant outer layer and an inner cooling system. The spacesuit helmet is 3D printed with solar radiation eye protection. The boots feature heel sliders, which help to secure feet to footrests in microgravity. Crew Dragon's control and pilot system consists of a trio of touch screen displays. The suit gloves are flexible and compatible with touch screen devices. SpaceX designed and made the form-fitting black and white suits with comfort in mind. It is maneuverable, unlike the NASA Space Shuttle's bulky orange suits. However, the spacesuits are only intravehicular and have not been tested outside Dragon, nor when working outside of the ISS, or International Space Station. Fortunately, this drawback will be addressed in the new design. The new SpaceX EVA suits will feature more advanced technology to allow the Polaris Dawn astronauts to safely leave the spacecraft's pressurized cabin to conduct the first ever commercial spacewalk at an altitude of approximately 500 kilometers above the Earth. As program representatives announced via Twitter and shared a photo of some of the crew members seeing the suits, the new EVA spacesuits are upgrades of the current IVA suits. Like Isaacman said, at the moment I was mostly thinking about what it means for SpaceX when they are constructing EVA suits and rocket vehicles that can land on the Moon and Mars. They are getting closer. Because as Polaris program representatives said, building a base on the Moon and a city on Mars will require thousands of spacesuits. The development of this suit and the execution of the EVA will be important steps toward a scalable design for spacesuits on future long-duration missions. And if the Polaris Dawn crew successfully tests SpaceX's suits, it's probable that the company will offer the spacesuit to NASA. NASA itself is developing a new suit with superior changes. The next generation spacesuit of this agency, known as the XEMU, will feature a new design to accommodate a broader range of sizes and improve fit, comfort, and mobility. 
The improvements specifically include a highly mobile lower torso for walking and kneeling that will eliminate the bunny hopping astronauts experienced during the Apollo missions. And most of all, NASA's spacesuits are designed to meet the requirements of extravehicular activities. The agency spent a lot of money on making spacesuits, but the results were not as expected. Too many delays happened. That is also one of the main reasons why Artemis' schedule has been pushed back. NASA slashed the spacesuit program's planned $209 million budget by $59 million after Congress gave the agency 77% of what it requested for its Gateway program in 2021, in which the spacesuits are to be developed. As of August 2021, that set the program back three months. As a result, its first two suits, as the report pointed out, would be ready by April 2025 at the earliest, despite the investment amounting to $1 billion. And last year, Musk offered SpaceX's services to help NASA make its next generation spacesuits. Musk wrote in a tweet that SpaceX could do it if need be. His proposal came in response to a report by NASA's Inspector General, which is the investigative office that audits the agency for fraud and mismanagement on the work being done to develop a new line of extravehicular mobility suits, which are informally called spacesuits. This proposal is actually supported by many people, because it's clear that SpaceX's suit has many advantages. SpaceX's IVA suits, like NASA astronaut Doug Hurley said, were actually much easier to get in and out of in zero-g. But the suits need a tether connection and do not offer protection against radiation. They are not used for extravehicular activities. And like that, NASA's spacesuit prevailed over SpaceX's. However, this advantage will completely disappear once SpaceX's new spacesuits are completed. SpaceX is independently and rapidly developing spacesuits that will be tested before 2022 ends. And if all goes well, SpaceX will become a game changer as it takes the lead in both spacecraft and spacesuit development. At that point, instead of developing expensive suits that are behind schedule, NASA can completely choose more feasible options. The agency selected SpaceX to develop a lunar-optimized Starship Human Landing System, or HLS, that will land Artemis astronauts on the moon. Maybe we will see astronauts sporting SpaceX's upgraded spacesuits during the historic lunar return. Here's hoping that the agency will make careful considerations and better choices in the future. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. So, if you enjoyed it as much as I did, please give us a thumbs up. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.